One of the biggest secrets of porcelain is that you can take this clay body once it's leather hard and you can totally make it back plastic again without breaking your piece up, altering it and make it into something else. And that's what I do. That's part of, you'll see me throw a foot rim and then you're going to think, okay, she's ready, she's finished now. But that's when I start dancing with the clay. Um, I'm going to start out by showing you how I create the press mold and how I put it together. You cannot understand a medium or work with a medium under, unless you understand what you can do with it. And I fully believe that working with porcelain is almost like working with a personal relationship, like you would work with some person. it's something in between. If you want to start working wood firing you have to learn everything about wood firing. It's the same thing with porcelain. If you use it like a stoneware body and if you're going to go away from here and you use it like a stoneware and you learn some about the abilities of porcelain that's okay. Then you can go apply it in your stoneware type work or in your stoneware clay body. But if you want to push the limits then you're going to find what I'm doing here and it's going to start getting your mind going and it might change your life forever as far as your outlook on, on porcelain. Put that one aside for a second and start doing this one. why I call her the diva is because she's like a princess that got that little pea sitting right deep. You all know the, the fairy tale. The pea sits right under the, the, the mattress and she feels it very, very quickly. So when I start working with her, I know her history, where she came from right there out of China the first time when the Chinese people were very fortunate to dig up colon and a flux from the same mine and they came up with a natural clay that they could work right like that and that's how Marco Polo found them in those early days. But we all know mines get worked out and, and it's not available anymore so the Chinese people had to change to man-made clay. They're still fortunate because there's their colon, there's their flux, they can put the two together, there's enough silica in it and they can work it. That's why they are so far ahead of us. Um, in my own studio I try to, um, if I end up with a rounded one that's a little too deep, I would carve in a little area there. This one is just, just good enough. So from one side, making sure that you don't trap any air because you want this to get the shape of the bowl that you're dealing with. Now when you guys are ready, you just do this. What I'm doing here, score it. This is good enough. The edges of your porcelain is so thin, you don't want to break the whole piece to go in different pieces. And that's what's so nice about using scissors if, or even exacto knives. For one, I want to make sure that it spreads out and even. So I'm going to put it down and then I pick it up on that side, creating a rhythm. Put it down. So if you put it down, it might make a flatter side on the one side. You can always do it like this, or you can, once we cut it open, you can just reshape the piece again. Or what I many times would do 
is I would take a little plastic square bucket and I would put, put foam right in there and I will just let it sit like that. And if nothing else is available, it's easy to do this. Just create this and let it sit in there. If the two clays are too equally wet, you might end up with, you know, a little bit of piece of clay that comes over. But you can always take a piece of plastic and just line it with that and let it sit inside of there. This is made from this. And this is also made from this. So it's always better to just add what you need to add and then put it aside and forget about it until it's sturdy. And, and then when I get it sturdy, I'm going to wet it up again and then it's gonna become a dance. Where the one minute it's wet, the next minute I dry it out. I even use my microwave at home.